Andrea, thanks for coming in. Thanks a lot. So, Andrea, how do you assess erectile function before surgery? As you know, over the last two decades, roughly, a number of data has suggested to double check the quality using uh, validate instruments. And this is the case for me. I've been using the double IEF over the last uh, three decades, roughly. And this is the case immediately before the surgery, but well before it is even better, since data seems to suggest that the longer the time before the surgery itself, the better the results. And they are much more other way to define the quality of erectile function preoperatively. So what happens with some couples, of course, is that the diagnosis of prostate cancer affects their sexual function. Is that right? That is reality. This is the case many times, at least in my country. You know, we are Italians, and uh, but this is real even in Europe all around. Uh, the emotional profile of our couples is completely different after receiving a diagnosis of cancer, which is not only prostate cancer, it is for every single cancer. The uh, sensation, the feeling, the emotional profile they do have and they do report over sex and during sex is completely different. And the attitude towards sex is completely changed. And therefore, the longer the time before you are going to, you know, uh, receiving this kind of data, I would say, the Double uh, IEF is an example, but whatsoever kind of uh, instrument could be useful in the setting, the better. Excellent information. W now, what do you do after the surgery or after the radiation? How do you follow them and what do you tell them in terms of expectations of recovery? That is really important. Uh, you know, after surgery, for instance, uh, the patient does receive a sort of uppercut from a boxer. And so there is a sort of loss of sensation. And this is, uh, functionally speaking, very important for your nerves. Uh, and therefore, there is a while during which the recovery of erectile function is not a well. And uh, we know that just one out of four patients will properly recover, spontaneous, thus meaning non-pharmacoassisted uh, uh, erections. And uh, you should be able to comprehensively explain your patients this is reality. It will take uh, a few months and sometimes up to 48 months to recover their own uh, erections. And whenever it is not the case, they may be treated with uh, excellent uh, you know, drugs thus including those oral pills, which are very famous, or injections. And whenever it is the case, uh, don't worry, you will receive a penile implants. And the, this is the case for you. You will recover your erections. Sexuality and sexual function does not mean only erection. You may feel uh, orgasmic, uh, you may retrieve your libido, which means uh, immediately after surgery, you may stay in a period of time where Sexual drive is not that high. Your sexual desire is not excellent as it was before sometimes. And even the uh, you know, urinary continence could be different as compared with the previous uh, period. And therefore you may have climacturia, which is not that easy to be explained to a patient, but sometimes it is easier. And uh, all these uh, situations put in together could be a problem for you. Don't worry, you will have uh, experts in the field before you explaining what's going on and treating you and your partners, whenever you do have partners, uh, in the right way. So you gave us a lot of information there, um, but if I could summarize, it sounds like a couple of things. You reassure the patient yep. that even if they haven't had spontaneous recovery, and you said that 75% of your patients won't have spontaneous recovery, that you can give them medications, either oral tablets or injections, and ultimately, for those who are refractory, there's surgical treatment. Exactly. And it sounds like what you're telling me uh, is that it's the interaction and the combination with the clinician and the patient and the communication and the couple is key and you give them knowledge and expectations. Yes, that is compulsory in the everyday clinical practice. Uh, this is the way to proceed with. Otherwise, you are not able to provide your patients with the best solutions at the right time. And you need to find the right solution for the right patient at the right time. This is the modality for us to proceed with.
And that's the reason for the guidelines, right? The Movember guidelines, the 47 key items that really are critical to optimal uh, sexual function, restoration, and management after prostate cancer treatment. I do completely agree. Wonderful. Andrea, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, sir.